I'm out here today to get some references and do some sketching for my Lakeland 365 project and I wanted to get this view of Loughrigg Fell. The film you're about to see is actually taken of a route that I did from Ambleside to the top of Loughrigg Fell a couple of months ago and as you'll see from the film what started off as a nice afternoon soon turned weather-wise. But this is the film. Loughrigg Fell lies to the west of Ambleside, which is almost in the centre of the Lake District. There's ample car parking in Ambleside Town Centre. From there, walk down through Rothay Park, across Miller Bridge to Miller Brow, up to Loughrigg Brow, walk past Lily Tarn and onto Todd Crag, before heading up on one of the numerous paths to Loughrigg Fell Summit. For the return route, we use an alternative path that will take us past Pine Rig to Miller Brow and pick up the track that we used at the start of the walk. Just after we cross over Miller Bridge, we turn right along the lane. Walk along here for a couple of hundred yards before taking the next left over the cattle grid, which will take us up to Miller Brow. hill that you can see behind me is Snarker Pike. It actually is the ridge that comes down off Red Screes. It's not a place I've actually been to yet, but I will do because it's one of those fells which Wayne might consider for his complete list. Nice bit of light on it today. White farmhouses just at the foot of the fell. I'm sure you get a good view of Ambleside from there. But that's for another day. We'll press on up to Loughrigg. As the lane steepens, it has a couple of zigzags, but we take the footpath that heads up to the left on the first zigzag, through the woods. Once you've crossed the stream, head up the wooden steps that will take you onto the open fell side. As you ascend, you'll be rewarded with some fine views of the Fairfield Horseshoe over to your north. And that's a route that I'll be covering in another film. The top of Loughrigg Fell, more than any other, is crisscrossed with many, many paths. I won't say hundreds, that's maybe an exaggeration, but it's just paths here, over here, up to there. If we look around this way where the tarn is, I don't know if you can see it because the sun, there's one from there, one from there, one from there. They're all over the place. It's like a maze. And in Wainwright's day, there were still a lot of paths. And they, those ones still remain. But anyone who tries to map the paths on here is not only wasting their time, but it just adds to the confusion. If it was me, I'd bring my youngsters up here or people who are learning to navigate, bring the OS map and almost forget the paths that are here in the bracken, use them, but don't navigate by them navigate to the high points of rocks and the and the tarns those things will never change and it's a great little fell for coming out practicing map reading skills and uh, learning how to use a map and a compass if necessary and using the features on the terrain the number of paths up here are just utterly confusing but it's a great fell to have a wander around especially on a day like today
There are well over a dozen tarns on the top of Lofrig Fell, but this is the biggest and the one that's named, Lily Tarn, and it's a popular focal point for visitors to the top of the fell. As we visited the area of Todd Crag, we were afforded fine views down over Windermere, but the wind was picking up and it was blowing in big dark clouds from the west. From here we could see our goal of the day, the summit of Lufrig Fell. We just had to pick our way between the humps and hollows of the undulating terrain. There is one good well-made path that crosses the top of the fell. Millerhow down to the right and down to the left Ellers heading towards Skelwith Bridge. But we leave the path after a short distance to turn right up to towards the summit. This way. Go on, up. And here we encountered the only real difficulty on this walk. But it's not really difficult, it's just a short rock step that leads from one level to the next. Looking back over the rock step, you can see where we've been on Todd Crag with Windermere in the far distance. The paths around here are mostly dry, but be prepared for a few boggy patches, so wear good boots. It definitely helps. One or two short sections of the path have been repaired by pitching just to prevent erosion but they're blending nicely into the hill. And this is it, the summit of Lufrig Fell, with its distinctive trig column. The big cairn that was here in Wainwright's day is now gone, but the views are unchanged. the afternoon to come and do the walk but it just shows that you should always bring the right kit with you a waterproof or another layer there's no sign of brightness at all and the way over there on Wetherlam that looks like heavy rain so I'll get back to the car as quickly as I can 
hopefully I've got some good footage and some photos from this afternoon. I didn't get all I wanted, but I'll come back on another day. This bit now, I don't really need to use a map. I can see Ambleside down behind me, or in front of me there. And we'll just head for that, and uh, easy enough to work my way back to the car. Shame about the light. Would be nice to have a good sunset, or just a, a nice bit of like evening light, but that's the thing with the lakes, you can't uh, predict anything, it could change. But out in the fresh air, good walk for Bailey, and a uh, good time of day to walk, hardly seen any people at all. Then back home from a tea. And maybe a pint. But our luck ran out. It wasn't long before we were hit by a heavy squally shower which included some hailstones. From this vantage point I was able to check out the route ahead. We were heading for those woods and I was looking for the driest path as possible. Once we were over the boggy section we picked up the path that we saw earlier and this time headed left to take us back down to Millerhow. but the light was really fading now. But I did manage to get one last shot before I put my camera away. After that, the track was really good and it was easy to follow in the fading light. It just goes to show that even on these lower Lakeland fells, you have to go prepared for a change in the weather. It wasn't a brilliant day for views, but any fell is a nice fell to go for a walk. That's the advantage about being ex Air Force. All you have to do is ring the guys up, and at the right time, they'll come and do a fly pass for you if you're doing a bit of filming. Brilliant, isn't it? I hope you've enjoyed the film. If you have, do click the like button and even better subscribe. If you do so, you'll then get informed when I post the next film in this series. If you're interested in the Lakeland 365 project, then do check out the description below and I'll put a link in to the website. But once again, thanks for watching.